so as we have seen, uh, there is a wealth of data on hydrology, meteorology, and glaciology. And I'd like to show you some information how um, Polish research groups are working on the environmental consequences of the, um, uh, of, um, the changing Arctic. We were very fortunate because we are working in uh, two areas which are highly comparable on one hand because they are two small fjords, but one of them, the Hornsund, which is a place where Polish polar station is situated, is washed with the cold local Arctic waters. That's that blue line on the picture. While the, another fjord, the Kongsfjorden, where it's a place of large international research facility, that's the area where we are working closely with the Norwegian and German partners, that is the fjord which is completely washed by the Atlantic waters, which is much warmer. And in such situation, we have one fjord which is still cold and another which already warmed up. And we are most interested, what is the difference? What is the uh, change in the Arctic ecosystem because of the warming? We started with uh, something with, uh, I may call Polish speciality with a taxonomy. We are still having a number of people who can identify plants and animals. It's now a very rare profession in Europe. And we started with the inventory. In Europe, there are only five sites which were selected during one of the EU projects for something called All Taxa Biodiversity Inventory. So we are identifying all living beings from viruses to the whales. And in Honsund, we got something like 1,400 taxa. That is a long process. We are inviting taxonomists uh, to some difficult groups, so it's still going. The database is building, it's open. We are providing it to the international data banks like OBIS. Then we were, of course, focused also on the, some dynamic phenomena. One of the most dynamic phenomena here is the retreating, very fast retreating glaciers. And that was known that the glaciers fronts are the places where the seabirds and sea mammals are feeding, but we are especially interested what is the mechanism on that phenomena? So we first, with ornithologists, we observed, we radioed the birds, and there were situations like kitwakes, the very common gull, that the whole big colony of 10,000 birds was feeding in front of a single glacier. And that's very changeable in time, and it's very dependent on a type of the glacier melt. So we studied in detail that process, and the key to the that phenomenon is that fresh water from glacier is mixing rapidly with the seawater, and there is a lot of marine plankton which got osmotic shock. It's washed with the fresh water, so it dies up. Part of the animals are floating on the surface, part are sinking, giving also the food for a very specific group of organisms which are living on the dying cadavers from the surface. So that's uh, quite a new um, information on science. And of course, we're interested in a larger organism like fish, and then again, striking difference comes from comparison between warm Kongsfjorden and cold Hornsund. You can see on the picture, the blue bars, it's the size frequency of fish in Hornsund, which is an Arctic fjord. Here we have only small fish, mainly polar cod, and that's the typical Arctic situation, while in the Kongsfjorden, the red, the graph, it shows the wide variety of small, medium, and large fish. Here we have a polar cod, we have a capelin, we have an Atlantic cod, we have a haddock, a number of other fish. So with the Atlantic water, the fish community is really building up. And what is the consequences of this? It's a major change in the food web. So we are comparing the Arctic, the cold food web, which is extremely efficient. The um, the, her the grazers like uh, wing snails or krill, they are feeding directly on the microplankton and they are large enough that they can be taken by the whales or seals or uh, seabirds. But with the uh, incoming warm water uh, with the Atlantic, we are getting a number of new species and the energy gets dissipated because there is a lot of small micro predators which are feeding on uh, different elements of the system. And in effect, you can see those two bottles, that one bottle which is semi-transparent. It contains great number of very tiny animals. They are coming with the Atlantic water. There is great biodiversity, but there is very little food. The 
food is expressed here in kilojoules, in the calories per cubic meter, while the cold coastal water, it contains much less diversity, much less animals, but they are large and juicy, and that makes a good food for the predators. Finally, we are interested in a coastal change, which is well visible for all the visitors of Svalbard. When the glaciers are retreating, when the fast ice is less and less common in the winter time, the phenomenon called tidal floods, the, the flat soft bottom areas on the coast, is changing a lot before. Every spring, the tidal floods were solid frozen and the ice was removing the sediment out to the sea. Now when the, um, the ice is gone, we, are, we can observe that the tidal floods are covered with the algae that are stabilizing the sediment and changing completely the picture. And finally, we may follow some specific species like that crustacean, which comes from Europe, and that's a warm water crustacean which is colonizing Spitsbergen. And on the left panel, you can see how it was occurring on Svalbard 20 years ago and how it was it advanced in the last year. So that shows the pace of the changes. And finally, I can tell and wrap it up that our trademark in the Arctic research is a long-term observation and biogeogosystem approach. So we are trying to combine different scientific disciplines together to get a comprehensive view of the change. Thank you.